Hi friends, good morning. I am out early this morning trying to beat the heat as most of you, I think in the United States, at least on the Eastern Northeast side of the United States are experiencing this heat wave that we've been having. It has been brutal. We are also in a drought here. I don't think we've had rain since like early or mid May. So over five, six weeks without significant rainfall, it's been very hot, very dry. I have been so busy putting down irrigation all across the property. I've been planting, um, rearranging some of my plants. We have planted these trees behind me. We've done all sorts of things around the property, really starting to get things kind of like foundationally get things together. We still very much have a long way to go. As a reminder, we are on three acres here in central Virginia and we moved here It'll be two years this fall, which is wild to think, but we really started working on this property last season. We had irrigation professionally installed. Oh, excuse me. Mosquitoes are out. We had irrigation installed last season and they pretty much ran it across about two acres of the property and they did all the plumbing and two wire so that we could hook it up to the um, controller but each individual zone is just rough plumbed. And then we are hooking up all the distribution tubing and the emitters ourselves. And that was just a way to cut costs. So if you are ever having irrigation installed, something to consider is that you can do kind of the detail hooking up of the irrigation because it's very DIY friendly. But of course the like hooking it up to the well and the plumbing and running the wire and all of that trenching is a little bit harder to do yourself. Um, so that's something we've been working on a lot this year, getting a lot of our plants in, still have a very much long way to go. We have so many big plans for the property, which I will kind of talk you through a few of them as we are walking, but I wanted to get you out this morning and just kind of show you the progress that has been made on our property in the last month or two, all the plants that are blooming, just kind of where things are. I will tell you, this is a very rough, raw, tour there are tons of weeds the crabgrass has sprouted which you know i i kind of just want to show you because if you are starting a new garden and you have new beds especially those first couple years where you haven't been after the weeds you are going to have an exceptional amount of weeds because those seeds are in the soil they're in the ground and no one is virgin land no one's been working on it and pulling the weeds so it takes several years to kind of get control of all of the weeds not that they ever go away and you're ever going to have a weed free garden but they are prolific in our our garden this year the crabgrass last year we went out of town for a couple of weeks we came back and the crabgrass was over ankle high in most of our garden beds so we're trying to be a little bit more proactive this year but even still it's like you know i work in the beds and the very next day it's the crabgrass is back it's just never ending so this is a very unfiltered look you'll see lots of weeds we have not mulched because i'm still trying to get the irrigation down we want to put the irrigation down and then get the mulch spread on top of that so it's still on the to-do list it's still happening and as you know with a garden like as you put the work and emphasis into one area it's like all your focus and attention is on that and you turn around and look at like another area and it's just in a matter of days absolutely gone to weeds and just changed it's a lot to keep up with i'm learning um two acres is a lot more than i anticipated but it'll be beautiful and once we kind of get things established and i'm not constantly planting and doing irrigation it'll just be more of the maintenance but i think that's gonna be a long time from now because we have a lot more plans to add even more garden beds than what we have already done so I wanted to just kind of take you around, show you the progress, show you where things are, what we've added, how things have changed just over the last couple of months. So let's go take a look. So like I said, this is very raw, unfiltered. We haven't edged, we haven't totally weeded, we haven't put mulch down, um, but even still, I think things are just looking so pretty. The last time you saw this bed was probably, I think it was back in April. When I started planting up, this is a part shade bed. It faces east and gets a good amount of morning sunlight and then 
af late afternoon, it is all shaded. So I have just been adding to this. Things have really grown in. We have peonies in here, some Jacob's Ladder grasses. I have gardenias. The gardenias um, are just finishing up their bloom. And my goodness, they are so fragrant. You don't even have to be that close to them and I can just smell them. This is the frost proof gardenia. This is a strawberries and cream grass. I have firelight hydrangeas there in the back, some um, pulmonaria, heuchera, hellebores, virginia, and then I put in some annuals, some begonias, begonias and impatiens. And they're all just really filling in. I love the contrast. I'm trying to do a lot of like dark purple and variegated textures in this garden to just kind of make it pop um, since it is a shade garden. This is, um, I believe this is the chocolate chip ajuga. Um, actually, it might not be the chocolate chip, but it is an ajuga. There's some of the Jacob's Ladder, some more peonies. I do have some hanging baskets up here. This one is just a coleus and wire vine. This is the hanging basket that I planted up in a video. It did get nipped by a late, very late frost we had in April at the end of the month. Um, we got down to around 31, 32 degrees. So it had to bounce back from that, but it really is filling in nicely. And looking beautiful with all those begonias and it's just one of my favorites so moving on over here i think yeah those arborvitae are new i had not planted those the last time you saw this space so those arborvitae i'm just trying to do as like an evergreen backdrop to kind of hide this is our um uh basement egress. I think the fountain is in need of cleaning, but the flag irises and the Carex feather falls grass, I think is just beautiful. It, I mean, it practically glows with how variegated it is. I just love that strappy foliage, especially contrasted to the arborvitae. I put in some astilbes. There's some columbine in here, hostas, some more Jacob's Ladder. There's this really pretty hydrangea, and it is a very dark leaf, um, burgundy, kind of burgundy green leaf hydrangea with these really pretty ruby pink blooms. I got it on clearance at Lowe's, I believe. So it was definitely a little worse for the wear. I had to cut it back kind of severely, but it's starting to bounce back and look a lot better now. And then this is one of my Japanese maples, one of my favorite Japanese maples. So pretty with that fern-like texture. This is just a nectarine tree that I'm holding over in this space. I'm gonna be training into an espalier for the side of my shed eventually. Um, we are painting our house eventually, so that's why there's paint samples on the house. This is a topiary that I just planted up not too long ago, which you'll see in a video on Instagram. If you don't follow me there, I am Garden with Joanna on Instagram. But this is just an ivy topiary. I turned an old tomato cage upside down and my goal is to just let it fill in all the way around so it'll just kind of be a tower of ivy, which is a great way to have ivy in your garden and not have to worry about it taking over. This little area is also kind of like my holding area of plants that need to be planted. So I do have a handful of plants, but I have significantly reduced the amount that I need to plant. This is a pretty little shade container lobelia and some caladiums and ferns and coleus but one of the big things that we recently did was add this emerald green arborvitae kind of wall and you'll have to bear with me 
because I know it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but the plan is, oh look, there's the crabgrass. <laughs> you can see, I mean, it just takes over. This whole area, everywhere you see green right here, weeds and grass, all the way over to the back of our house will be our deck. So this, you can see, I mean, this is a very unfiltered look. Kids toys everywhere, shoes everywhere. This whole area is gonna be a deck. It steps down about at the corner of the house from a high deck. It'll step down two steps to kind of a lower platform that'll be just a little bit higher than ground level. And that whole platform is gonna run all the way to the end to this flower bed here and all the way basically down to where our septic is. And then you'll step off the deck through this little flower bed, there'll be a path. But the reason we are doing these arborvitae, because we're gonna do some on the other side as well, is because this whole side yard, this whole side yard of grass will eventually be our dog run. And so we kind of wanted a separation from the corner of the deck, which will end right about there where that shovel is, so that it kind of funnels the dogs this direction so that we don't have to necessarily gate the entire deck. It'll just kind of funnel the dogs out this way so that they're kind of in one area of the yard for the dog run. So that's why that hedge is there. So we just planted those six arborvitae. And I think as they fill in, it'll look really nice too. It kind of creates a little bit of a garden room over there. And then, like I said, <laughs> I mean, very unfiltered. You've got our blow up water slide and the kids toys, but so eventually this will all be a deck and then there'll be long steps off the deck that'll kind of end into this flower bed. Plan on doing stepping stones to kind of take you through to the other side. And then this is our south facing um, garden beds, which, you know, gets a ton ton of hot hot sun so we've got a lot of good sun plants here starting with this is a lilac this is the centara double um, lilac and i just put this in the ground we got it after it bloomed but i have heard that the fragrance on this lilac is incredible i plan to kind of limit up like a tall um tall shrub small tree so I'm just gonna keep pruning on the bottom of it to kind of limit up. And then <laughs> this rather sad dead looking plant is a echinacea that I um, rescued off the clearance rack, which I feel like I do very often. And I will say nine times out of 10, I have good luck um, kind of nursing them back to health. So hopefully that guy will pull through, but echinacea is pretty hardy, so he should recover. We have a very tiny, tiny, tiny baby Japanese maple, a blood good, which, you know, one day it'll create some shade. I'm trying to do some of the heirloom chrysanthemums um, for cutting and just to have as a different kind of flower and texture in the garden. So that's what that is. It's just a little start that I got, but eventually it gets like 36 inches tall by about 24 to 36 inches wide. So it should fill in this whole area very nicely. I have the all dressed up rose, which just finished blooming its first round of blooms. Some liatris. Cannot remember the name of this false cypress, but it's a dwarf false cypress. And then I just put some lantana here in the front. I've got the Nyphophia, which I believe this one is, it's a Proven Winners, I'll put the name on the screen, but I believe it's like Orange Blaze or something like that, but oh my goodness, it's quickly becoming one of my favorite plants because it absolutely just glows. I don't tend to love saturated, um, really dark oranges or warm colors as like just a personal preference in my garden previously, but I'm absolutely loving this. So maybe I'm being converted to the orange side. Oh, and I did put in some other orange plants. These are, I can't remember the name. Let me pull the tag out. Let's see. 
This is orange marmalade firecracker flower. It's called, what is that? Crossandra. Um, I'm not totally familiar with it. I've grown it once before. It's just an annual in our zone. But when I grew it before, it got about two feet by two feet and it was just covered in these orange blooms and did not even blink an eye at the heat um, down in North Carolina. So I figured this would be a fun plant to add and kind of bring that orange a little bit closer to the edge of the border. This is just a little nectarine tree. And then a lot of these plants I grew from seed. So they're quite small. You'll see like this gara. This is sparkle white gara and I grew all of this from seed. There's some Korean zest agastache I grew from seed. There is some blue grandma grass that I grew from seed. I have a spirea and a nine bark back there. This is perennial lupin, and I also grew that from seed. I'm trying to grow as much as I can from seed just to save costs because, you know, this is a brand new garden and nothing was here. I have the lemon lace elderberry for a bright chartreuse pop of color. And then there is a ton of the Beyond Midnight Caryopteris, which will bloom late summer into the fall. And it is a beautiful blue, deep blue purple bloom. And it self seeded last year. That's one of the perennials I had in my garden from last year, but it self seeded all over. So I've just been digging up all the little starts that I find. Um, you can see some are here and just moving them kind of all. I'm going to create a nice big drift all back here of the beyond the night caryopteris. So there's some kind of mixed in with the lupin and goes all the way over. Got some echinacea and some wave petunias. Some verbena here at the front of the border. This is the homestead purple verbena, which will be perennial here in our zone seven. And then <laughs> this is one of the, um, I mean, goodness, this looks worse for the wear, but this is a sedum. I don't remember the variety offhand, but I'll have to put it on the screen. It's one of Proven Winner's sedums and it was on the clearance rack at Lowe's and oh my goodness, was it distressed. But you know, with sedums, you can just root the stems so easily. So I picked up three of them and I split them into these six clumps and they are starting to root. But, you know, it's <laughs> they're going to be very rough looking probably for the rest of the season, but they'll look very nice next year. And they're like a dark purpley foliage sedum. But I am all for rescuing the clearance plants because it's a great way to get inexpensive plants. So I have some iris. Um, that is a patio peach in a container, a lime tree. This is one of my favorites. This is an Agastache. I believe it's Kudos Coral is the variety. And my goodness, is it just performing so well. Oh, you can hear the irrigation. But it is electric in person. The color is just this beautiful coral pink. It smells fantastic. The butterflies, the hummingbirds love it. It is awesome. Definitely recommend it. I have a couple hostas back there that um, they're kind of in some shade because of the air conditioner units. But and then moving around here, these are some more clearance rack rescues. These are ice plants. So I'm going to do just kind of a almost like a ground cover on the whole front of this border. And they have a very pretty hot pink bloom and then these are some dark foliage dahlias. I think anything with dark foliage, any of the dark foliage dahlias are my favorite. And they're the this variety is very petite and it only gets like this 18 inches tall with this really pretty lavender bloom. Let me see the variety. I have the tag here. This one is pretty woman dark angel. 
can see. So I just have a couple of those at the front. I did just cut back all of my bachelor's buttons. So this bachelor's button was enormous. I mean, just a huge mess. It had flopped over as it tends to do um, kind of in the middle of the season. So I just gave it a severe haircut, which is why it's kind of looking a little rough, but it grows so, so well. Um, it'll bounce back in no time. So back here, you can see this little hydrangea here in the middle. That's actually um, a hydrangea. It's the same firelight hydrangea as I have in our shade garden um, or part shade garden. I rooted a little cutting that had broken off. It rooted right away. And so I just popped it in the ground here. Um, it's kind of amazing how well it's taken off. These are just um, some milkweed, some more of the blue grandma grass that I started from seed. So it's very small still. And then this is a really cool Japanese maple that the tag says it can tolerate a little bit more sun than most Japanese maples, um, but it's got this really tight leaf. It's just a cool little, like almost like shrub-like, but it says it gets 15 feet tall. So I just pop that in a container. I'm trying to remember what the name of this guy is. What is this? Uh, Pyurus. This is the flaming silver Pyurus. It's variegated gets covered in these kind of like cascading waterfall white blooms in the springtime. It was gorgeous. So pretty. And it can get about six to eight feet tall and four to five feet wide. So I put that there. It's evergreen, hopefully to kind of provide some nice block for the beautiful AC unit. I have some boom chocolata hydrang or not hydrangeas, geraniums. Um, I just cut them back. They finished blooming, so they're looking a little, a little rough, but they have a really pretty soft kind of purpley lilac bloom normally. I have a bloomering dark purple lilac back there. And then I grew so many geraniums this year from seed. I just popped some geraniums in the ground. And then these are, I mean, barely can make it out, but these are some of the banana cream. Nope, I'm sorry. These are the Daisy May Proven Winners um, Shasta Daisies. And they were also clearance rescued and they looked super rough when I got them and they are bouncing back incredibly well. So eventually, you know, next season, the year after, they are just going to fill in this whole area and be covered in their beautiful white Shasta blooms. Moving on over here, I kind of moved our lemon coral sedum and kind of brought it out as a ground cover all the way around. I just love the bright pop of chartreuse that it adds. And I have one of the Gara. I believe this is, I think this is the sparkle pink Gara. I have some boxwoods for evergreen and some echinacea. This is the powwow wildberry. And then recently, I've been working on this area. So I had already planted up these containers this spring, which are just doing fantastic and look beautiful on either side. Um, and then I decided that this part of the house really needed some evergreen interest. So I put in some emerald green arborvitae, and there's one behind each of these containers. So because I already had the containers, I just brought the containers forward. So right now they're blocking the arborvitae, but um, in future seasons, I probably won't even do these containers here just so that you can see the emerald green arborvitae. But eventually, you know, they grow about three feet wide, 15 feet tall. So they will be just nice kind of pillar um, evergreens. So those just got planted. A couple days ago you can see back here and they'll fill in this space nicely and these containers are looking really pretty just love it there's um the super tunia bordeaux the super uh, bina amethyst 
some geraniums I grew from seed, the black and blue salvia, some daisy, I think these are, what are these called? Oh goodness, I can't remember. These sweet little blue daisies. If you can't tell, pink and purple is kind of my favorite color palette. So then moving on to this side, I kind of want to take a step back and show you our plans for this whole area. So looking very rough right now, it's just <laughs> weeds and a little bit of mulch, but this is our side entrance to our house. And this is all going to eventually be edged with metal edging and gravel. And it's going to actually go out into this area. And this whole area is going to be gravel as well. It's going to be an extension of our driveway. So that's kind of why it's kind of our dumping ground right now for dirt and things, because our plan is to bring our driveway all the way up here to right about the corner of this house. So the rest of this will be an extension, just kind of like a, um, almost like a parking pad. So there'll be a gravel, it'll all be edged nicely and it'll kind of extend over just to about right there. So that's the plan for that. Probably not gonna get to it until this fall or winter. But that's kind of why it's not edged really well right now because we're gonna, you know, get to it eventually. I would say this bed probably gets the absolute brunt of our full hot, hot sun. So got a lot of good sun loving plants over here. More of the lemon coral sedum, foxwood, echinacea. This is the luminary opalescence flocks from Proven Winners, which I have absolutely loved. And it is kind of a pale soft pink with a dark pink eye. Um, and it just plays really nicely. I have some penstemon in the very back there and then that echinacea, so it ties the pinks together. And then this is the Mystic Spires Blue Salvia, which I absolutely love. It's probably one of my top five perennials, especially because it is a perennial in our area. I believe it's zone seven through 10. And most of the time you can find it sold as an annual, which means it's cheaper. And I found it at a local nursery in these little tiny four inch starter packs and I believe it was like $3.97. So four bucks for each plant for perennials. And I bought a dozen of them and kind of put them all throughout the property. But they have bulked up. I mean, they were little sticks when I first purchased them. And they've bulked up a ton. And you can see there's a little bumblebee on them. The bees love them. All the pollinators love them. And they will just keep blooming and blooming all the way until the first frost. And they have such a nice glossy green leaf. They love the sun. They don't need a ton of water, very low maintenance. So if you're looking for color in your garden all season long, highly recommend the Mystic Spires Blue Salvia, especially if in your end zone seven or above. Then I have this really pretty variegated lavender and it's from Southern Living Collection. It's not bloomed for me yet, but it's a really nice kind of chartreuse lemony yellow variegated lavender. I have some neon coral, I believe it's neon coral sedum. This is the, some more of the um, Daisy May daisies over here that are bulking up as well. And then I just kind of repeated everything. So you can kind of see there's the drift of the um, Mystic Blue Salvia, the Phlox, Drift of the Lavender, and then I just kind of did little clumps. So there's the daisies there, there's a clump of yellow um, lantana here, and these are a clump of a very kind of dwarf pink penstemon. Um, so just repeated that all down. And then in the back here we have some Wajilia, that is blooming a second round, which I didn't know it did that because it has already bloomed this spring. 
got some blooms on it and then there's some penstemon back there and some of the um pugster blue butterfly bush which is so pretty and it's way more blue in person it's kind of showing up a little lilac purple on camera but it's definitely kind of an electric blue so the plan for this area it's kind of all perennials um, with that arborvitae evergreen and then I do have a um, blue point juniper here which kind of has a more blue green foliage but the plan is I'm going to eventually do a big espalier, espalier on this side of our garage. Um, it is south facing so it gets like I said a lot of sun a lot of heat and I was thinking about doing maybe a jasmine I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do but I want to do a big espalier down this whole side blank wall because I didn't want to put you know anything a tree or any large shrubs just because it it can't be too um, this bed can only be this deep because we are going to add a parking area which I believe it's about 12 feet deep maybe 15 feet deep it's deeper than it looks on camera but just to kind of create some vertical interest I want to bring an espalier in and um, grow some climbing vines on it so I have this blue point or blue arrow juniper for evergreen interest and eventually it'll kind of fill in this whole area and just kind of provide like a visual stop between this garden bed and then this front garden bed which I'll show you this is the dazzleberry sedum it's a another dark foliage sedum I have a bunch of agastache that I grew from seed around this little bird bath some licorice plant for that silvery gray foliage and then because it's kind of close to our house I wanted some vertical height but I didn't want to plant you know too tall of a tree right next to our house so this is a vitex um, also called a chase tree and I'm it's basically a large shrub but I'm limbing it up so I'm keeping all the branches down here um, pruned off and I'm gonna limb it up and just let it get to its height mature height with just foliage at the top so it kind of looks more like a tree and it does get about 12 to 15 feet tall and then covered in these really pretty lilac blooms which pollinators love it's very drought tolerant once it's established heat tolerant and then surrounding it is some russian sage it's the denim and lace from proven winners and then i have some more of the super uh, tunia bordeaux the super bina um, is it the amethyst the dark purple some purple vinca that's in there as well it's kind of like my purple garden <laughs> um, this is a evergreen holly which had some deer damage earlier this season and then it also just had some dieback so it's kind of looking a little rough but eventually it'll fill in and we're going to kind of keep it pruned to more of like a um you know a pyramid shape back here i have this obelisk um that's supporting my polka uh, climbing rose this is a own root rose from heirloom roses and it's a really pretty kind of apricot orange um, rose super pretty but it's just in its first season so yeah all most of all of this I think last time I showed you was not planted the Russian sage the vitex and the rush grasses were but everything beyond that point in that perennial garden was not planted so that's all new and then I have these planters next to our garage which more of the supertunia bordeaux which is probably my favorite supertunia um, some penstemon grass some vinca in there and eventually these are just little starts of a variegated liriope a clumping variety not a spreading variety which i will eventually just kind of continue on and line this garden bed with so 
it's coming together. It's really, really coming together. I love all the color. It's just been a lot of work, but a lot of fun. And I love just kind of how all the colors kind of play together and draw your eye down. I love the bright pop of that lemon coral sedum. It's just really pretty. I think once we get everything mulched, once we get everything edged, and it's gonna be really, really nice. Very, very happy with it. So this video is getting kind of long. I don't wanna make it too much longer. So I'm just gonna do a quick overview of the front garden. I'll have to do another video for the front, but you can see, like I said, the crabgrass. I was just in here and just had all of that weeded <laughs> and it's already back so quickly um, because eventually these pathways will be gravel. They're not gonna be mulch, um, but it is even in the beds. I mean, it's everywhere. But I think the whole front garden is really starting to fill in beautifully. So I'll just do kind of a quick scan. Here's the Pugster Amethyst Buddleias. Oh my goodness, look at those blooms. They're just gorgeous, they're huge. We did add this um, burgundy leaf uh, crepe myrtle. I have two of them with a kind of a bright purple magenta bloom. Just, we decided we needed kind of some darker foliage trees in here. And then you can see in the back, the hydrangeas are looking great. We have the boxwood hedge that got planted with some gara behind it. The um, Helen von Stein lamb's ear, some lithodora ground cover, <laughs> a lot of crabgrass, and it's just mirrored on that side. One thing we did do recently, you can hear the irrigation, the hanging planters are dripping is we just moved these are all a dwarf arborvitae and they were set back against the house and we decided we pull we pulled them forward about five feet um well about six feet and this is going to be an arborvitae hedge that i'll keep pruned in front of it i have some cat's pajamas nepeta which is one of the smaller um nepetas from proven winners and they are very sun like very heat loving, sun loving, um, low water needs, bloom this beautiful purple bloom. So eventually, these are all little starts. Eventually it'll be a nice whole row of the Nepeta, the Arborvitae, and then we layered in, these are the incredible hydrangeas from Proven Winners. And the plan is that those will just kind of fill in this whole back behind the Arborvitaes and just kind of gracefully kind of pop up and bloom with their beautiful big white blooms. And then in the winter, the arborvitaes will kind of block the sticks of the um, hydrangeas. So I just thought that was a really pretty layer for the front of the house. Another one of the dark leaf crepe myrtles. Just kind of do a quick scan. Oh, wait, you know what? I want to show you before we end this. My Chautapa. Oh. It's blooming and it's beautiful, you guys. Look at this bloom. It is so pretty. I'm trying to get it to focus. Let me put my coffee down. You can just see, I mean, it really does look like an orchid bloom. It has a really sweet light fragrance. We have another one down there on the hill, but I'm gonna limb this one up like a tree since they get so large. My focus is just, there we go. So I'm gonna kind of limit up and just kind of have it fill in this whole area. We did have the um, obelisk back there for a clematis. That's my Gatsby pink oak leaf hydrangea blooming beautifully. And it was eaten back to, um, to nubs by the deer. So I'm surprised I even have blooms on it this year, but it's doing fantastic. So all of this has been planted, just overlook the weeds <laughs> and the lack of mulch. Um, move around here. So the plan is, if you haven't um, seen previous videos, this is all gonna be gravel. It's gonna be edged with metal edging. There's gonna be a big circular um, space here in the center with gravel. And then this very center of it will be a bed with a fountain. 
We have a little sit seating area here under the dogwood tree. And then this will eventually be um, gravel and wood steps because it is a pretty big hill. So you're gonna step down and then we'll have a gravel walkway that'll take you over to the driveway. So this will kind of be like the main entrance, whereas this will be kind of a cut through path. And if you can overlook the weeds, things are looking really nice. I love the glow of that abelia. The superbenas are looking beautiful. Veronica's. Look at this Veronica. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, focus, come on. There we go. On one plant, this is one plant, you kind of have a pink and a purple. It's so beautiful. Okay, so I know this video is getting long, so I'm going to wrap it up, but I just really wanted to kind of show you the growth of everything, how it's looking. My husband is obsessed with topiaries. They are like his favorite thing. So we did put these um, pine tree topiaries in, which it will make more sense when we have the walkways in, when everything is edged and tidied. Um, but things are just really looking good. I'm so happy to have all of this irrigation in. Just a huge help because we were hand watering all of this for so long. I did add a big drift of lavender all down here. Um, this is the sweet romance lavender from Proven Winners. But it's really just starting to come together. So, so happy with it. Thanks for joining me on this kind of impromptu morning coffee walk and garden tour. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing the progress of everything we've done the last couple months, all the plants we've added, how things are growing together and just how it's starting to come together. I'm so excited for how it's looking. If you'd like to see where things were just a couple months ago, check out this video. If you'd like to follow along and see more progress as we add plants and redo this property, hit the subscribe button below. I really appreciate you watching and thanks for gardening with me today.